Good evening, everyone. My name is Dr. Ray Paparati from Life Point Church International here in White Plains, New York. I'm so glad that you're joining me tonight as we're coming here just to give you a word of encouragement and help you through this process, which seems that's uh, chaotic as of recent. We don't have to say the word coronavirus anymore without someone knowing what's happening. That word has become synonymous across this globe with heartache, disaster, fear, pandemic. As we look at what's happening in our country and specifically for us here in New York in our state, there is an alarm being raised of fear like never before. There are many questions that people have. So for the next few nights, the next five nights, I would like to look at something together with you, and that is questions in crisis. Questions in crisis. I want to look at five questions that people are asking today, and I want to give you answers to them. It seems like so many people struggle with these questions and don't know what the answers will be, but I want to share them with you tonight. So tonight in our first part, our first question, we're going to tackle this question here. Why did God send the coronavirus? Why did God send the coronavirus? It's interesting to see how everyone's attention turns to God, whether for good or for evil against him, but everyone's attention turns towards him in the midst of a pandemic, and everyone asks the questions, why is God doing this? Why is God sending this? Why is God doing this to hurt us? One week ago, the New York Times uh, published an article that is titled and begins with this statement. This is the title of that article. Where is God in a pandemic? This is the subphrase to that title. The honest answer is we don't know. New York Times published that last week. Where is God in the where is God in a pandemic? The honest answer is we don't know. I beg to differ immensely. We know exactly where God is in the middle of a pandemic. He is right where he is supposed to be, in charge of all things in this world. Did God send us this virus? There are many people who believe that he did to punish the world. Many people believe that he did to bring other people close to him. Many people believe that God sent this virus because he's a masochist and he likes to see people suffer. Either of these views falls largely short of the truth in the matter. I want to read to you a scripture from James chapter 1 verses 12 through 17. James 1 verses 12 to 17. Listen to what it says. Blessed is the man who perseveres under trial. For once he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, and he himself does not tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is carried away and enticed by his own lust. Then when lust has conceived, it brings uh, uh, birth to sin, and when sin is accomplished, it brings death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Listen to this final verse. Every good thing given and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shifting shadow. The very first part of that verse talks about the, the trial, the struggle that we are in. In this verse, is talking about uh, persevering under trial, but we can take that, we, we are all going through this trial. We're struggling in the midst of this heartache, this difficulty, and he's talking also about sin. And he says, in the middle of sin, if, I'm, if I sin because of something, I can't turn to God and say, oh, you're the one who tempted me. You're the one who is trying to make me fall. He says it's impossible because God does not tempt. There is no evil in God. The second part of that verse speaks of who God is. Every good thing comes from God. Let me ask you this question. It's a rhetorical in nature. Is there anything good? Is this coronavirus good in nature? We can say a resounding no. There is nothing good in this coronavirus. Therefore, if every good thing comes from God, we know that every evil thing does not come from God. 
God brings good gifts to his children, not evil. Yet, evil still exists. This is called living in a world that is steeped in sin and brokenness. It's called humanity. Why do we have this coronavirus? My friends, because we are human. We are stuck in humanity. If we blame God for this pandemic, we must also blame him for the blood that we shed when as children we fell and we scraped our knees. This world is full of hurt, full of sickness, full of struggle, pain, trial, and tragedy. It's completely our fallen and human nature. Now, when things are in our control, we take responsibility. We don't put it on God. If we have a headache, we never say, God, why did you send us this headache? God, why did you send us this pain? We never say that. Do you know why? Because of our responsibility, because we have a cure. We have pills that we could take. Because we have pills that we could take, we never blame God for it. We blame what when we have a headache? We blame the circumstance. We blame stress. We blame the climate. We look around. We blame allergies. We blame everything else except God. But when things are out of our control, we blame God for sending them. Because we don't have the vaccine yet, it's easy to look at God and say to him, why did you send us this virus? <clears throat> So here it is. Why did God send the coronavirus? God did not send the coronavirus. John 10.10 10 says this, The thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. <clears throat> but Jesus says that he came that we might have life, and have that life more abundantly. <clears throat> We can safely say that anything in regards to hurt, misfortune, disaster comes not from God, but from the devil. What's amazing about the greatness of God in the midst of this ailing world is this, that God meets us in the midst of our humanity and he uses all that evil, all the sickness, all the hurt, all the harm, and he turns it around to benefit us and he uses it as a platform to restore just a few more verses here. I want to take you back to Genesis chapter 50, verse 20. In the life of Joseph, as he's at the end of his life and he's recounting the details of his life and the hurt that has been brought to him, he says this in speaking about his brothers who sold him into slavery, who tried to take his life from him. He says in Genesis 50, 20, As for you, you meant evil against me. He's talking specifically to a person, specifically to human uh, principalities, human powers, and he says, You meant this for evil. But God meant it for good in order to bring about this present result to preserve many people alive. Let me tell you, the devil has brought this virus here into this world. We, we are dealing with it because we're human. The devil brought it to us, but God will use it to save us. God will use it to restore us. God will use it to reach people. God takes our mess and our problems and he turns them around so that we can experience the love of a great God who dares not let us walk through our own mess alone. My friends, God did not send us this virus, but he will turn it around for our good. Good for those who love God? Yes. Salvation for those who are far from him and calling on him because of it? Yes. Good for those who are searching for purpose and for meaning, yes. Let me close once again with the title of the New York Times article that I mentioned in the beginning. Where is God in a pandemic? He's right here. I'm going to close with this final scripture from Romans chapter 10 verses 11 and 13. Where is God in a pandemic? Listen to these verses. For the scripture says... Whoever believes in him will not be disappointed. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Where is God in the midst of this pandemic? He's right here, waiting to be called on by you and by me. God bless you tonight as you call on the name of the Lord for help in the midst of this pandemic. Join me tomorrow night for the second part in questions and crisis. God bless you tonight.